In this iOS 18 masterclass, you will get over 100 standout and hidden features that every iPhone user should know. Let's begin. Once you unlock your iPhone, you might not see any change right away. But if you tap and hold anywhere on the blank screen to turn on jiggle mode, you can place icons and widgets almost anywhere on the iPhone home screen. Yes, I said almost because you cannot place icons and widgets in between spaces. You are only allowed to place icons in specific grid patterns, or I can say the Apple way. Sticking to the jiggle mode, if your widget has this grab icon on the bottom right corner, you can drag it to resize the widgets on the home screen. You can also tap and hold any app which has a widget assigned to it and convert it to a widget directly by tapping from the list of icons as shown. To go back to the app icon, you can select the first icon from the list. Speaking of apps, you can finally hide or lock apps on your iPhone. But you need to have the Face ID enabled on your iPhone to unlock this feature. Tap and hold any application and you will get a required Face ID menu. Tap on Require Face ID and tap on Done to lock your app with Face ID. If you try to open it, it will ask for your Face ID to open the application. And if you have installed third-party apps from the App Store, you will get an additional Hide and Require Face ID option. If you tap on Hide app, the app will disappear from the home screen and will be hidden in the bottom section of the app library. Good job Apple! By making it obvious to name the folder hidden, now everyone knows where the hidden apps are located. To access the app, you have to tap on the hidden folder and after Face ID verification, the app will pop up on the screen. Going back to the jiggle mode, you also get an edit button on the top left where you get a list of three menus. The first is the regular widgets library to add widgets on the home screen, which is similar to the previous iOS version. The next is the customize menu where the major changes are being made. On the bottom, you get four new options to change the icon theme to regular light mode, dark mode, and automatic based on your phone appearance setting. And lastly, the new tinted option, where you get two sliders, first to select any color of your choice and second slider to adjust the saturation of the selected color as per your liking. There is also a color picker icon, where you can select any color from your iPhone wallpaper to match the entire theme. There is also a wallpaper brightness toggle, where you can dim the wallpaper to make the dark theme even more darker. You can also remove the app name by selecting the large toggle to get the minimal theme on your iPhone, which I like it a lot. But you will also get a blank space area at the bottom when you select the large icon theme. I mean, come on Apple, you can do better than this. The third menu on the edit button is the edit pages, where it will open the home page library to disable pages, which you can also open by tapping on the page indicator icon on the home screen. Why add unnecessary menus when you can do the same thing with just one tap? Enough with the home screen, now let's move on to the control center, where the UI has completely changed to a circular pattern. On the top right, you have the power icon, which you can tap and hold to slide to power off your iPhone. Instead of going deep into the settings application in the previous iOS 17 update, you have to tap and hold to power off. Just a single tap on it won't trigger anything. On the top left is the plus icon, which turns on glow mode to the control center, which you can also enable by tapping and holding on the blank space area. It enables a add control menu at the bottom. If you tap on it, it opens a list of several search control menus which you can add to the control center. You no longer have to go to the settings application to add a controls menu. And just like the home screen customization, you can place icons anywhere in the control center and even resize them if there is a drag handle attached to the controls on the bottom right corner. You can even scroll through different pages by swiping up like music and connectivity controls added as default by Apple. Or you can even swipe through the icons as shown. You can customize the control center as per your liking by adding or removing control pages. I think it's an unnecessary feature to add more pages to the control center. But if you can customize it according to your use case, like using home controls, it can be beneficial as well. The same control center theme is carried forward to the iPhone lock screen, where finally you can change the default flash and camera shortcut to different control shortcuts of your choice. The list is similar to the controls menu and you can open any app of your choice directly from the iPhone lock screen, which is a welcome feature. You can even remove both shortcuts to create a minimal theme look for your iPhone lock screen. For the iPhones having the action button, you can now assign shortcuts from the list of controls from the control center. Let's go back to the main home page and start the features and changes on the per app basis. When you open FaceTime, Zoom call or WhatsApp video, swipe down for the control center and tap on the menu below the dynamic island. You will notice a brand new audio and visual preview interface where you can select all the audio features with a cool new animation beside it. You also get a live video preview from the front facing camera 
with video effects on the right side for easy access. If you go back to the control center, there is also a new flashlight animation added to the dynamic island where you can slide up and down to increase or decrease the light intensity which is only available for the base model iPhones. And for the pro models, you can even slide left and right to make the light focus narrow or broad in typical Apple behavior exclusive to pro model iPhones. Coming back to the FaceTime application, there is a brand new feature added called Share Play Remote Control where if someone shares their screen with you during FaceTime, you can control their phone screen to carry out solutions for any troubleshooting or even draw on the screen which reflects on other person's iPhone to indicate steps to complete any specific task. Next up is the calendar application where if you tap on the plus sign at the top right to add a new event, you also get a reminder toggle in the right where now you can add reminders directly into the calendar application. Both the apps are now integrated into each other and you don't have to create separate tasks for each application. You can also pinch in and out on the calendar app to get a preview of all the events and reminders for the entire month which I found to be very useful. Besides the calendar application, we have the most controversial photos app which gets a completely new UI design makeover that many may like or dislike as per their use case. All the media preview is stacked on the upper half which you can slide down to go back to the old preview UI. On the bottom left double arrow icon, you get new filters added to the list like addition of screenshots. On the top right, you get the search and select button separated along with your Apple photo setting where you get to see all the iCloud data and change the photo settings straight from the photos app itself instead of going into the settings application in the previous iOS versions. When you swipe down further, you get different albums and collections which you can customize and arrange the order of their preview by swiping down to the bottom. You can use the slider and tick mark options to enable or disable collections of your choice. When you open any photo or video from the library, you get a new tiles preview designed at the bottom along with the location and date information in the top left corner. But when you swipe to a video preview, it does not fill the entire screen like the photos preview. Instead, the preview is strung down with a new sliding bar to scrub the video forwards or backwards. You also get to see timestamps when you scrub through the timeline. To fill the entire screen, you have to tap on the video, but then all the UI elements get removed, ending with just a video preview, which is quite annoying. Also, the video preview is set to loop by default in the new photos application. I think a lot of screen real estate is wasted for the video preview designed in this new photos application. Next up is the camera application where it took over a decade long time for Apple to add a pause button in the video while recording. Still no switching between lenses for the front facing camera while recording and no pro mode added for manual control to the default camera application. For pro mode, Apple launched a separate camera application called the Final Cut Camera which I find to be annoying because Apple could have added the same pro features to the default application by giving a separate pro menu besides the regular menus down below. In the notes application, when you create a new note and tap on the attachment icon, a new record audio menu has been added where now you can add audio recordings to your note. If you press the captions icon on the bottom left, you get a live preview of your audio as well. After the audio is saved to your notes, you even get the audio transcription added below the audio preview. You can even tap and hold to rename the audio note or copy, share and delete to organize the notes content. In the clock application, the stopwatch preview can now be added to the dynamic island just like the timers preview. It is also visible on your lock screen where you can pause or restart the stopwatch to start a different lap. In the podcast application, there are minor changes where if a podcast has chapters in it, you will notice it while scrubbing through the timeline with the chapter title and timestamp hovering above the scrub bar. You can also share specific timestamps from the episodes by tapping on the three dot icon on the right side, tap on share episode, tap on from start and you will notice the timestamp where the timeline is paused to share the podcast link to others. In Apple Maps, you can now download offline hike trails by searching for nearby national parks. Although this feature is only available in the US, hopefully it will start rolling out to many countries in the future. In the wallet application, if we tap on the plus green sign in the top right corner, and select the driver's license or state ID. We can now see that the Hawaii has been added to the list. Hopefully many states will be added in the coming future so make sure to keep an eye on the wallet app. Let's quickly go through the settings application where a lot of minor changes have taken place. When we tap on our name on top and select the iCloud menu, the UI has changed to a tile select structure and you may also have a subscriber logo on the top right if you have purchased extra cloud storage for your iCloud account. Also, when you tap on storage, you will get a cool new animation of app icons which acquire major iCloud storage space. If we go back, 
the sign in with apple has been added below media and purchases which was previously included in sign in and security going to the main settings page you will notice that menus has been rearranged with most used settings placed on top with less used placed down the line also if we tap on the search section of the settings application we get siri suggestions and a recent list which is similar to the spotlight search feature on the iphone home screen in the wi-fi menu when we tap on the i icon beside the connected wi-fi network the private wi-fi address now has three option off fixed and rotating we changes the wi-fi address periodically to reduce network tracking in the battery menu the charging section now introduces the charge limit scale where you can set the charge limit from 80 to 100% with 5% increments previously we had only 80% limit also the optimized battery charging gets automatically disabled if we select any limit below 100% in the general settings we get a small description up top followed by a minor rearrangement of the menus with each menu having a logo assigned to it which was not present in the previous iOS version the same goes for the accessibility setting where there are a lot of new features added to the list starting with motion we have a new show vehicle cues features added which introduces dots on the screen which helps in reducing motion sickness while traveling we also have an eye tracking feature added in the physical and motor section where if we turn on eye tracking a dot appears which we have to follow to gather our eye tracking data which is then used to control the iphone screen hands free and can be beneficial for individuals that face difficulty using the iphone touch screen We also have two new background sounds added in the audio and visual menu inside the sound menu where night and fire sounds have been added. We also have music haptics which is kind of a gimmicky feature that vibrates the phone based on the music beats played in the music application. It also works in the settings toggle where it vibrates for turning the toggle on or off in the settings application which I find to be a waste of battery usage hence I always keep it off. But my favorite accessibility feature is the vocal shortcuts. where you can set any word to trigger different shortcuts or actions in this feature i will use siri request for example i want to know the weather forecast using a voice command by speaking a specific phrase such as w update and it will trigger siri automatically without saying the siri word or triggering siri manually which i find to be very useful the camera menu also has two new features where you can record video while playing the song in the music app at the same time Previously the song got paused while recording video in the iOS 17 version. A new controls menu is also added in the preview settings where it shows previously used controls instead of a list of controls menu by default. New wallpapers are also added in the iOS 18 section which includes dynamic wallpapers that circulate through all the wallpapers mentioned in the list with light and dark mode. We also get a new gradient font color for the time along with several font languages added to the default font list. But there's more. You can now assign different icon themes to different wallpapers like for example if i switch between different wallpapers the icon theme i applied to that wallpaper will not be carry forward to other wallpapers each wallpapers can have their different icon theme attached to it if we go all the way down to the settings application we will find a new apps menu where all the default and third party installed apps are arranged in alphabetical order for easy access Speaking of apps there are two new apps in the iOS 18 which we will discuss further in the video Going back to the home screen the phone app now has a T9 dialing feature added in the keypad section where the contact list appears as soon as you type any digits You can also tap on the contact name to enter the entire number for quick calling In the recent section a search section has been added below the recent header where you will notice that a phone icon has been added to the right side for quick calling I mean come on apple why can't you add the icon in the recent section on the first page we can also record calls using the notes application where the person will be notified that the call is being recorded and all the conversations will be transcribed and stored in the notes app along with the recorded calls another feature related to the phone calls has been added to the airports which uses hands free siri interaction for example it uses head nodding gestures to answer or decline incoming phone calls on your iphone while using airports You also get voicemail transcription notification on your lock screen when there is a missed call or voicemail instead of going inside the voicemail section of the phone application. In the Safari application, there is a new toggle for reader mode when it is available where UI has been changed completely with more focus on customization. And all the other website settings are listed in the three dot button on the bottom right corner. We also get a new hide distracting items feature. where you can select a website portion to hide using a very cool thanos snap animation 
the website portion stays hidden even if you reload the website unless you close the tab or open the website in a new tab. In the messages app, the reactions on the messages are colored instead of gray icons and many emojis are added to this reaction list. You can even react with stickers as well as any emojis from the entire library. There are many text effects features added in the new text icon above the keyboard where you can make the text bold, italic, underlined, striked out and apply different text animations to it. Also, if we tap on the plus icon on the left hand side, a new send later option has been added to the list where you can select the date and time of the day up to 14 days ahead to send the message in advance which is a very handy feature. We also have two new apps in the iOS 18 software update. The first is the calculator app which looks the same from the outside but there are a lot of features packed inside. On the top left, we have a history tab which we can also preview by sliding left. On the bottom left, we have a new calculator icon where we get three more menus. Where first we can do scientific calculations using radian or degree mode. We can also convert a lot of parameters including different currency conversions. Last but not least, the math notes, which integrates with the notes app to carry out calculations and even provide answers mimicking your handwriting style. If you use the keyboard to type calculation, it will show your real-time results besides it. These real-time results of math notes are universal across the iPhone, whether it be messages, spotlight search, notes app, etc. I think the features in the calculator app will be very useful for students or individuals using an iPad combined with an Apple Pencil. Next up is the brand new passwords app which requires your face id to open by default where all your passwords created or stored in your apple id are organized into different groups like for example you can also share your wi-fi qr code so that others can join without the need to type the password which cannot be created from the wi-fi menu in the settings application also authenticator codes security keys and passwords are separated so that we do not have to scroll through the list similar to the previous ios version also, if we create a new shortcut in the shortcuts application, we have a new swipe up UI with a lot of information than the previous iOS 17 version. We also get a game mode feature whenever you start playing any games on your iPhone. This game mode turns on by default which helps in giving performance by reducing background activities and also improves latency while gaming with Bluetooth controllers. And if you want to maintain 100% battery health on your iPhone for the longest time, do check out this video on your screen. And don't be a fool to buy the latest iPhone 16 series as I have explained in this video. See you over there.